Hey guys, Brent here with Video and Tools, aka BYT. Thank you for joining me, and today we're gonna be tackling a bar cart. In all reality, my sister just got married and she said she wanted a rustic style bar cart, and that's what I'm gonna give to her. So if you wanna see how to change wood that looks like this to this, keep on watching. Let's get started. Material check, first off, make sure you have a mask, wood glue, tape measure, grinder with 50 grit sanding disc, pipe clamps, hand clamps, circular saw, sander with 80 grit, 120 grit, and 220 grit, tongue oil varnish with 220 grit sanding sponge, wood paste wax, drill and screws, and of course some black iron hardware. Here's a list of all the items I used. Now on a sopping wet Seattle day, I found all this white tongue groove pine at a local salvage yard. Yeah, pretty rough. I brought this material inside and dried it out for a number of weeks. Hopefully you can avoid this step. Once dry, I took my grinder and applied a 50 grit sanding disc to the actual grinder itself. I'm using this type of sander specifically because of the fact that you can take off a large amount of material in a very short amount of time, as you can see here. Yeah, real quick. I will specifically say to be careful when you're removing material with this type of system. It takes it off very quickly and you do not want to gouge your wood. You never want to gouge your wood, really. In any case, make sure you have your breathing apparatus on you because dust will be getting everywhere, as you can see here. Yeah, everywhere. But the beauty with this system is that it takes off this material extremely quickly and a job that would potentially take you an hour to do could just take you a few minutes. Look at that. Who knew something was so beautiful was under something so horrifically ugly? Once you have all your boards completely sanded and ready for gluing, go ahead and take your pipe clamps and actually place some paper underneath your pipe clamps just to make sure glue doesn't get it everywhere. Line them up, make sure everything fits. I specifically actually sand the sides of them first and then vacuum out the dust that remains before gluing. I apply a liberal amount of wood glue to both sides of the board. This way I know for sure when I'm clamping down the boards, I have a nice even coverage of wood glue, which will ensure the fact that I have a nice strong joint for years and years to go. Yeah, where are you going? Nowhere. In any case, just know that you don't have to have tongue groove boards. I'm using it because this is what I found, but this type of glue system would work for any type of wood material. Go ahead and start clamping up the material. Just make sure you use some type of end block. Otherwise, if you don't, you will actually indent the wood on the ends. If you use a block, it disperses the weight evenly and you won't have to worry about damaging the wood itself. I make sure to clean up the excess glue with a wet rag this way. You don't have to worry about trying to grind it off later on because that makes life a lot harder. I let the glue dry approximately 24 hours before removing the clamps. Once I remove the clamps, I go ahead and mark my ends, use a 2x4 as a guide and clamp it down to the tabletop itself. I can then take my skill saw and run it up against the 2x4. That way I can use it as a nice even guide to make sure I'm cutting off the exact amount that I want. I mean, come on, look at that nice crisp edge. Go and flip the board over and repeat the same process. Just make sure you have the correct depth measured from the edge of the blade to the end of your skill saw. I then proceed to make another complete mess by taking the grinder again and leveling out the boards themselves. There is a bit of edge difference between each board, so I want to make sure and smooth that out as much as humanly possible with the grinder first. I then take my hand sander and proceed to sand it down with 80 grit, 120 grit, and then 220 grit with my rammed orbital sander. Now you don't need a random orbital sander with this type of project, but it does leave you with a smoother finish with less swirl marks. Once I have the board leveled and cleaned up, I then take my circular saw and cut the ends off as well as cut the board in half because this is an eight foot long board and we are gonna be making a top and bottom portion of the bar cart. I grabbed my sander and quickly cleaned up the edges of the board themselves, making them nice and purty. I then proceeded to actually take a vacuum and clean up the face of the boards themselves, making sure that there was no further dust and debris on the boards because we don't want to ruin our beautiful finish with some dust. And we're going to be using our tongue oil varnish for this project. I apply a liberal amount of the varnish to the wood itself because I know this stuff will suck in quickly. Oh, who am I kidding? I just slopped that on, didn't I? 
In any case, I went ahead and then took my 220 grit sanding sponge and started sanding the finish into the pores themselves. I find this is a great way to apply the finish because one, it'll knock down all the small dust mites and small nibs in the finish to make it smoother as well as the fact that it's a sponge so it's soaking up the excess varnish as you go. Which tends to make it easier especially when you're trying to get into those rough spots like old holes. Yeah, that comes along with the territory when you're using reclaimed lumber. I wipe down the excess and let it dry for 24 hours. As you can see, the wood itself soaks up the varnish quite heavily and will leave spotchy marks on the wood itself. That just means that it's ready for another coat. I apply the second and third coat the same way I applied the first. With the fourth coat, I apply it with the back side of the sanding sponge. This way, I don't kick up any more dust nibs in the finish and it leaves the finish nice and smooth just the way I want it. After four coats, it's gonna look beautiful and glossy. Now, you might like this and you can stop there, but personally, I want it to look more rustic, so I'm gonna be taking my 320 grit sandpaper and splashing some mineral spirits on the surface and roughing up just slightly. I'm applying very little pressure to the sander itself because I wanna remove as little of the finish as possible. This will allow you to keep the wood looking beautiful the way it is, as well as the protection of the varnish itself, but once you wipe it away, it will be a dull finish versus the nice, bright, glossy finish that we had before. Once I evenly rough up the entire surface, I take some paste wax and apply that to the surface itself, rubbing it in a circular motion. This probably will leave the board looking beautiful as well as giving some added protection to the board itself against spills because you know how some friends get when they get a little too tipsy and spill over your nice beautiful tabletop. Go and wipe it down with a nice clean rag and you are good to go. Now that you have your tops done, it is time for your hardware portion of this project. And in all reality, this is actually quite simple and easy to put together as long as you buy the right material parts, which I listed earlier. It's basically a big, heavy jigsaw puzzle that a five-year-old can put together, a smart five-year-old. In any case, place your bar top on the ground facing down and then place the hardware on top of that. I like working from top to bottom. Yep, just like in bed. In any case, moving on. Start screwing in your floor flanges. Just make sure you don't choose a screw that is longer than the thickness of the countertop itself. Otherwise, you might be drilling straight through the top. Not good. Also, make sure you're checking for levelness as well as making sure that both sides line up appropriately. Once the top is fully installed, go ahead and flip it over onto the bottom and start screwing in the hardware from there. Once you have one floor flange installed and in place, you might come across the fact that the other floor flange adjacent to it needs a little pressure to be placed in properly. Just go ahead and push it into place and then screw it down. Once you have all the flanges installed, go ahead and flip the unit over and start installing the wheels. Just remember when you're installing the wheels that the back side of your bar cart gets the swivel wheels and the front side of your bar cart gets the stationary straight wheels. If you don't do this and you put it the opposite direction, it might be a little difficult to try and maneuver this big honking thing around. Trust me. Go ahead and flip this thing over for the last time and start installing your beautiful little handle. Now this is a pretty simplistic handle and you can change it however you want, but this is a nice clean way that I decided I wanted to install this guy. This thing is looking good, but it is way too bare. We need to start loading up with a few items. Little of this, little of that, and before you know it, it is ready to go for a party. Who's ready? Now that is one beautiful, sexy beast of a bar cart. And there you have it, episode number 20 of Be Ready Done, good to go. As you can see, there's a lot of work involved when trying to restore wood that is so badly damaged, but you know what? There's big payoff in the end, so keep that in mind. Thank you for joining me. Please like this video, please subscribe to this channel, and please let me know what you'd like me to do in my next video. I might do it. In any case, thank you for your time, and catch you next time. Note to self, always watch out for kitback.